Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for commenting. And thank you for the growth of my channel. It's amazing to me. My mind is completely blown. I have several items on today's news list. The first one is a 10 minute video from PragerU by Adrian Johnson titled, Why I Am No Longer an Atheist. I'm not going to play any of it for you. I'm just going to put the link in the description and you can watch it yourself if you like. It's a very interesting video and she talks about her life and how <clears throat> she was an atheist and she, um, she had purple hair and a lot of tattoos and stuff like that and she didn't fit in anywhere and she had a marriage that broke up and then eventually she found God. I thought it would be interesting and some people might want to watch it. The second item I have is the CIA deployed resources to Washington DC for the January 6, 2021 Trump rally. This one blows my mind. <clears throat> the CIA is supposed to be a spy organization that only works on foreign soil and never in the United States. In fact, I think it's against the law for them to work in the United States. And yet, during the January 6th event, they had bomb techs on, at the ready. They had dogs, uh, bomb sniffing dogs available. They had all sorts of resources. Now you might say, okay, what, you know, that's not really spying, but the point is every law enforcement agency of any size has bomb techs and do uh, bomb sniffing dogs. Why is the CIA getting involved in domestic affairs? There's something drastically wrong here. This just came out through a Freedom of Information Act request. The next thing I want to share with you is titled, Ohio Volunteers Uncover Massive Irregularities, irregularities excuse me, in the Voter Database. And I want to show you this article because it, it's, it's really troubling. A group of citizens in Ohio started investigating, I don't need these, started investigating uh, elections after the 2020 election because they want to know what was going on. And what they found, in, and this is just in Ohio now, is really disturbing. Um, I'm just going to read you the highlighted portion. 58,209 resided in an apartment or in a mobile home, but had no uh, unit number as required on their voter registration application to ensure proper delivery of mail. 4,143 were older than the oldest person in the U.S. at the at the time, or were too young to re legally register. 4,143. This is on the Ohio State voter rolls. 6,348 had a date of birth that was different in 2022 than it was in 2020. 253,486 voters supposedly registered on January 1st. 84,221 84, voters registered on another federal <coughs> holiday and 2,001, 693 voters registered on Sunday, all times when Ohio boards of elections and state offices are closed. And there's plenty more there. But this last item I have to read to you is really disturbing. On December 10th, 2022, 11 days after the Ohio caucuses officially concluded, and one day after the election was certified as accurate and complete, the number of votes 
record, uh, reportedly cast 4,201,368, and the number of records identified in the state's official list of legally registered voters as having voted 3,039,289 differed by more than a million votes. You get that? Uh, more, more than a million votes were counted for people who were registered and claimed to vote. <laughs> yeah, and they said there was no problems. It was a perfect election, right? In fact, the day after certification, 13 counties <clears throat> had each updated fewer than 10 names in the state's voter history. Four hadn't updated any. So, Ohio recorded more than a million votes for people that were not registered. And they certified the election. Think about that for a minute. And that's just Ohio. Ohio's not even a state that we thought was problematic. The states that we thought were problematic were like Pennsylvania and Georgia and <clears throat> Arizona and Wisconsin. Uh, man, I'll tell you what. It's an absolute, it, it's criminal the way that we are treated as citizens of this country. It really is. We don't get any respect. We're treated like we're stupid. And they just cheat left and right and nobody cares. Nobody does anything about it. Well, this group is doing something about it. They're going to the courts and they're filing lawsuits to force the states to comply. And this movement has spread to other states where they're finding similar problems. So again, I'll put the links in the description. You can look at them for yourself. Next article I have is titled Blood on Its Hands. The FDA will remove anti-ivermectin social media and website posts under a lawsuit settlement agreement. Some doctors sued the, the uh, FDA, FDA because the FDA was spreading lies about ivermectin, that it didn't, that it was, you, you probably remember this. They said, who takes horse medicine is what they said. Sure, if you do any research at all, you know that the medicines that we give to animals, we also give to people, which is change the dosage is all we do. You don't give a, a, you don't give a, a medicine to a horse at the same dosage that you give to a human being, but the medicine is the same and does the same thing in both animals and in people. So they've now, and this, along with the previous article I gave you, these are kind of encouraging to me because citizens are starting to sue and forcing the government to straighten up. We need more of that. The next article is about Vietnam. Two presidents have been ousted in one year, and the second president is under a uh, cloud of suspicion because of uh, bribery and corruption that uh, over $2 million involved. So a lot of things going on in Vietnam right now. We don't know what's, what the end result's gonna be, but it's kind of interesting. And then the last article I have is, my country is returning to totalitarianism. This is the daughter of a legendary Czech freedom fighter. And I'm gonna pull this article up because I wanna read just a little bit of it for you. Okay, from the highlighted portion. 
But the repression that is taking place is shocking. For example, since January of last year, the government has brought a criminal prosecution against a teacher named Martina Bednarova for statements she made during a media literacy class. During that class, she presented her opinion on the history of the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. The government prosecutor claimed she had denied, questioned, and approved of genocide. Well, (laughs) what is free speech if you can't deny those things? I mean, what is the purpose of free speech if you can't say stuff that's not true? See, the the thing that bugs me about all this is basically it's a slap in the face of you and me because basically what they're saying to you is you're not intelligent enough, you're not diligent enough, you're not not, uh, smart enough to listen to this information and decide whether or not it's false. That's what they're saying. We have to monitor speech on your behalf because... You just can't take care of that yourself. Uh, The case evoked the communist trials for those who remembered it. The central piece of evidence was a secret 17-minute recording on the mobile phone of one of her pupils. The school fired Bednarova the very next day. (sighs) Now, you know... I don't know what the woman said. Maybe she said something that was really outrageous. And maybe the school is justified in firing her. But the state is not justified in trying her and putting her in prison for free speech. It just isn't. The, the, the trend seems to be worldwide that most governments are engaging in suppression of speech. And that can't be good for anyone anywhere in the world. Whenever you suppress speech, totalitarianism comes next. And then after that, lots of people die. Look it up. The history is replete with the stories of people who died under governments that were supposed to be their government. But they killed them because they had the wrong opinions. We need a lot of change across the the world. We really do. As always, I'll put these links in the description for you. You're welcome to follow up on these if you desire to. And I will pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you'll be healthy and you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I also pray he'll do the same for the people that you love. And I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.